It's Wendy from Shiny Happy World. It's the 15th of the month, so that means that there is a new pattern in the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club. This month we have an adorable little llama, and I'm going to show you in a minute how to make this pattern, but right now I just want to talk to you about where to get it and when to get it. So it is May 15th, 2020. If you are in the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club, this pattern is in the clubhouse now for you to download. If you are not in the club and you want to join, anytime you join between May 15th and June 15th of 2020, this pattern will be in the clubhouse. It'll be your monthly pattern to download. The Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club is $4 a month and you get a new pattern every month, brand new, never seen before. If you are not in the club and you don't want to join the club, you can still get the pattern. You just have to wait a little while. This will be in the shop at Shiny Happy World sometime late June, early July of 2020. So again, it's in the clubhouse from May 15th to June 15th. And then a couple weeks later, end of June, early July is when you'll be able to find it at Shiny Happy World. So here's how to make it. Okay. The first thing you're going to do is print or trace your pattern onto the paper side of fusible backed uh, adhesive, paper backed fusible adhesive. So the paper side is smooth and the glue side is bumpy, so it's really easy to tell the difference. Um, the pattern has already been reversed, so all you need to do is trace it or print it onto the paper. Then you're going to roughly cut out each of the pieces, and when I say rough cut, I mean, leave a little bit of space all the way around. Leave a little bit of space outside the solid lines and leave a little extra space anywhere there's a dotted line. That's where the piece is going to tuck behind another piece. So that's kind of giving you a little bit of a seam allowance. After you have rough cut it, you're going to fuse it to the back side of your fabric. I'm using a batik here. There is no front or back, but normally you would fuse it to the back side of your fabric and then you're going to do a clean cut and let me show you a little bit closer what that is so let's take the same one of those ear pieces on the clean cut you're going to cut directly on the solid lines all the way around and like i mentioned you're going to leave a little bit extra anywhere that there is a dotted line so for this llama we've got a few different pieces we have the head we've got a muzzle piece and a nose that's going to sit on top of that muzzle. Oh, here, I'll put them to the side so you can see them all. And then for each of the ears, you have an outer ear. That's the larger of the two ear pieces. And then you have an inner ear. So I did all of these in shades of blue. Um, and I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Llamas come in all different colors. I mean, they don't come in blue, but they come in gray and brown and beige. And there's not really any standard. Like some animals, the muzzle is always lighter than the face. That's not the case with a llama. So you can do whatever you like. I decided to go with a lighter muzzle and lighter inner ears. Um, but other than that, uh, pretty much anything goes with llamas. You could even do multicolored llamas because there are spotted llamas and blotchy llamas. So have a lot of fun with that. The last thing you're going to do before you start assembling is what you see on the front of these pieces, and that is tracing some of your marking lines. So uh, when I do the pattern pieces, I always leave everything inside the pattern there so you have it for reference if you need it, even though you're just cutting out the shapes. So while the paper is still fused to the back, this is really important, keep that fused on there, you're going to take the piece and put it up in a window and you'll be able to see these lines then shining right through the fabric. Even on a dark fabric, it is pretty easy to see them for most fabrics. And just, uh, just trace those features. I use a simple black fine tip Sharpie, nothing fancy. And for the line, like for the downstroke on the nose and the mouth, I'm gonna stitch right on that line. So I trace that line exactly where I want it to be. The nose is going to be an applique piece that I'm going to set on top of it. So I don't need a line exactly outside the edge. I just draw a little bit of a line inside it just so I have a general idea where to place that. So the one exception where I might use a fancier pencil than the, than the sharp Sharpie 
is you can see on the, um, the llama's face where I traced the eyelashes exactly where they were on the pattern. And then I want to mark the position of the muzzle so that you don't have to figure that out. Um, I did not mark that with a black line because I knew I was going to use a lighter colored fabric here and I was worried that the black line might show through. So I used just a white chalk pencil there. Um, anything, any kind of light colored marking pencil, if you think you might be putting a lighter fabric on top of it and you're concerned about the dark showing through. So next, we're going to peel off all of these paper backings and then we're going to layer it in. Okay, when you peel the backing off, it leaves the adhesive on the back of the fabric. And you can see, now that you've peeled it off, you have no uh, guidelines to follow. That's why you do that tracing before you peel that off. I always like to start with the head first. And here, I'm going to move this up just a smidge so you can see the bottom edge of the block. I line the bottom, the cut edge of the head, up with the, the cut edge of the block. And I'm going to make her just a little off-center, just to be interesting. And then you take each of the ears and remember how you left that little bit of extra. Now you can see where that goes. And with the llama, you actually have, because this is curved and the sides of the head are curved, makes it really easy to see where that goes. And then we're going to pop the top parts of the ears in there. And this one's a pretty simple, pretty simple face. Not a lot of pieces to outline. And then the nose. So what I'm going to do is take this to the ironing board, fuse it all down, and then I'm going to take it and outline it. I'm going to outline all of the pieces in plain black thread just with a simple straight stitch. And then I'll come back here and let you see it. And I'll also talk you through the order in which I did all that stitching. Okay, here it is, all finished. So got everything fused down and I outlined everything. And let me just take you through the path that I took. Uh, this is a pretty simple one, but I still like to think about it ahead of time so that I can minimize the number of times I need to stop and tie off. So I started down on one side of the body and went all the way up and around and then came back for a second pass, went past the bottom of the ear, and then it's always on my second pass around the main head that I do all the appendages and things that are connected. So I got past the bottom half of the ear and then I went up and around the top of the ear once, twice, three times, and then I came up to the middle of, to the inner ear and did once, twice, three times, and then continued on around the top of the head and did the same thing, went past the base of the ear, and then around the outer ear, I went once, twice, three times, and then doubled over here and to the inner ear once, twice, three times, and then continued around for that was the second pass around the head. And then the third time, I just went once back around the head, tied off. That was my first time I had to tie off. And it is a little bit fussy. It's just slow going around all of these bumps, but I've got a video that um, I'll post a link to that will give you some tips on how to do those tight curves. So now we're at the inside of the face. Uh, I did the eyelashes next, the eyes and the eyelashes. So I started on the outer eye and I did the same thing for both eyes. Started at the outer eye, went once to get that curve of the eyelid and then came back for a second one. And then each of the eyelashes, I went over it four times. So once, twice, three times, four times, back to where I started continue along the bottom of the eyelid and did the same thing with the second lash, one, two, three, four, continued on and then did the third eyelash, one, two, three, four, continued up to the top outer corner of the eyelid. That was the second pass over the eyelid and then I did a third pass back to the inner corner and tied it off. Did the same thing on this side, started at the outer corner once, on the second pass did all the eyelashes and then one more pass back here. Now for around the muzzle, that's simple. You just start on one side and go one, two, three times around, tie it off. And then for the nose and the mouth, I start usually inside the nose on this little straight stretch. I don't do two, three, um, 
three rows of stitching in the nose because it's black on black and you can't see it anyway. So I just do one stitch around the nose and then continue on till I get to the top of the mouth. And then I do this line going down. And then again, the mouth stitching here gets four because it just makes it easier with the way that it's structured. So one, two, continue on to this side for one, two. And then I did a second run here, three, four, three, four, back up to the nose. That's the second pass on the downstroke. And then I did just three and four just to make that the same thickness as the smile and tie it off inside the nose. So that's the kind of path I followed for the stitching just to keep the number of times I have to stop and tie off and start a new one to a minimum. So I want to talk a little bit about colors too. So this one I used um, a dark purple from the Rainbow Boutiques fabric bundle. That's a new fabric bundle that we have at Shiny Happy World. And I love how it looks with the printed fabric on it. I've got a post that I'll link to about how I choose fabrics and one of the things that I really like to do is to make my back background block a different type of fabric from the applique. So I've got three basic types of fabric that I work with. I've got batiks which are just kind of a mottled dappily look and then I've got printed fabrics which have a more clearly defined print like this gingham and this dots and then I've got solids. So with those three categories, I like to choose one category for my background and a different category for the applique and I'll show you in a second some other alternatives, some other combinations that I did. So this one is from the Rainbow Batiks bundle for the background and then it uses dots and gingham play. Those are two different fat quarter bundles that I have. Uh, for the applique. So this is a completely fantasy colored llama. Let me give you another fantasy colored llama. So this one I used the batiks from the same batik rainbow bundle that this guy was, um, but this time I used the batiks for the applique and I used a solid fabric for the background. And this solid is from another new bundle. This is from the muted rainbow bundle and it's not really a rainbow color but it has a couple of neutrals in mixed with it that look really great with the muted rainbow and I just loved the way this deep red looked against this kind of mushroom color. So batiks and a solid and then I've got one more. This one is a prince on a solid and in this case I did a more realistic colored llama. This is using the warm neutrals fabric bundle for the applique and then the background is from the Rainbow Sherbert uh, fabric or Rainbow Sherbert fabric bundle that's all different pastel rainbow. So this gives you a very kind of traditional baby blanket kind of color scheme um, that's a lot of fun to play with. So that's some different color options and that is it for the llama. I'll be back next month with a new Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club pattern. Bye!